Now, normally I'm joined by a very handsome sidekick named Tarek Davis, but Tarek can't be here today. So instead, I'm joined by a very handsome sidekick named Jeff Wright. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Amber. Fun fact about Jeff, he has three Olympic gold medals for fencing. No, I don't. Fun fact about Jeff, he speaks Icelandic. No, I don't. Fun fact about Jeff, he shouldn't contradict me. Got it. Mm. Got it. You guys, it's been a crazy week in America. Let's find out what happened. In a memo filed this week, former President Trump's impeachment attorneys said he shouldn't be blamed for the actions of, quote, a small group of criminals. A small group of criminals is also what Trump calls his children. <laughs> this year's nominees for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame include artists Mary J. Blige, Tina Turner, Shaka Khan, and Dionne Warwick. Said aunties, oh, okay. <laughs> it's me, I'm aunties, I said that. <laughs> Country singer Morgan Wallen's second album was ranked number one on Billboard last week, in spite of a recently released video of him using the N-word, or dare I say, because of. <laughs> According to a recent report, legal experts have warned that humanoid robots used for sex could attack people if they are hacked. Said people one year into the pandemic. That's fine. <laughs> According to a new investigation, four leading companies knowingly sold baby food that contained high levels of heavy metals. Officials became suspicious when Marcus weighed in at 2.5 tons. <laughs> I love him, he's so cute. Don't you pick him up, you throw your back out. Marcus? <laughs> an, an auction house in Boston recently began accepting bids for a Harvard sweater that belonged to President John F. Kennedy, proving that even death isn't enough to stop someone from bringing up the fact that they went to Harvard. Today was International Winter Bike to Work Day, or as I call it, uh-uh. <laughs> and finally, according to a recent report, 3,500 black people in Los Angeles have received the coronavirus vaccine. And I hope the other half of the Wayans family gets it real soon. And that was the monologue. Jeff, did you like the monologue? Yeah, I did. I'm happy to hear that. I would have been happier to hear it in Icelandic, but... Now, friends, it's Black History Month, and you know what that means. America is lying about how much we loved Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., and Rosa Parks. But black people, I'm here to tell you that you don't have to be the leader of a movement, a pop star, or a president to be worthy of acknowledgement this month or ever. So today, I'm gonna celebrate the black people who are important to my history. These are my parents who raised me. I call them Mommy Daddy. Mom introduced me to soap operas, or as she likes to call them, her stories. She taught me that it is perfectly fine to have an hour in the day that is just for you to watch beautiful white people cheat on their spouse, die mysteriously, and then come back to life as their evil twin only to cheat again. <laughs> and my perfect dad saved his four daughters from countless spiders our whole entire lives. We honor you this February, mommy daddy. Thanks for being a part of my history. Next up is cousin Jazz. Now. When I was 11 and she was 14, I asked her what all the rappers meant when they said, let's 69. So she took an upright fork and a spoon and then flipped over the fork and made them kiss. Thank you, Cousin Jazz, for making me laugh and laugh and for making me the most knowledgeable kid on the playground in seventh grade. This February, we salute all our favorite cool cousins. Next up, Mrs. Lemon, she was the first black teacher I ever had. And she was so smart and pretty and spoke Spanish. And I knew not only did she care about me, that she really saw me. I had never felt seen at school before. Thank you to all the black teachers going out of your way to help black students feel seen. Mrs. Lemon, I may not remember como hablar en español, pero nunca voy a olvidarte. Si es español bueno o español malo, eso es el español que recuerdo, lo siento. And lastly, a big part of my history is Mark, the old doorman at Old Town Ale House across the street from Second City in Chicago. Back when I performed there, we would always have a drink at Old Town afterwards, and Mark would always card everyone but me, and instead he would grab me by the upper arm and go, you, what you are doing at that theater is important. We need representation and you're it. You make your community proud, so be proud. 
and it always scared me a little bit. But it was also encouragement I was getting nowhere else. And I thought, how nice of him to lift me up like this. I love him. He was the best. So this February, remember that this celebration isn't just for the people who have come and gone, but also the people who are here right now. Your bus drivers, your clerks at the grocery store, your dentists, your favorite cousins that get in trouble for being too grown. You matter and I see you. And mom and dad are going to be so mad at me for being like, mommy watches stories and daddy kills spiders <laughs> instead of like talking about the great things they accomplished. But hey, that's the doofus you raised. That's on you. Happy Black History Month, everybody. Now, in addition to learning about important black Americans, another big part of Black History Month is white people asking, how can I be a better ally? Great question. Let us show you now in a segment called Ally of the Week. Of the Week. Recently, a school in Michigan had a meeting with parents to address problems they've been having with racism in their school district. And in the middle of that meeting, while a father was talking about his son, this happened. I remember when I went to his bedroom to say goodnight, and he was crying because of the abuse that he was enduring in this school system. Then why did you stay in Mexico? <gasps> She did! You need to leave! Play it again! You need to leave! That's right, lady we don't completely get to see. You are the ally of the week. Take that you got my order wrong energy and punish this dizzy bitch with his hands up like, oh, I didn't know we weren't doing racist shit today. How does it feel to be hilariously, kindly, and completely destroyed by someone who I'm assuming is the size of a pea? You don't have to be a superhero to be an ally. You can just be a person who's had enough and also a soprano. The anger that rose up in that lady's chest when she told your raggedy behind what was what really is a shining example of what an ally can be. I have watched that video 20 times and tonight after the show, I'm gonna go home and watch it 20 more. In fact, I'm gonna watch it again right now. You need to leave. <laughs> You almost never get to see a racist out in the cold light of day, loud and wrong, get ripped to shreds by an entire community. It was beautiful, and it would not have been possible without the ally of the week. So wherever you are, whoever you are, we salute you. Now let's get back to the news. On Friday, Burgess Owens, a pro-Trump Republican congressman from Utah, addressed the House of Representatives. He made a speech defending a motion to recite the Pledge of Allegiance during all House Judiciary Committee meetings. He did this after recently voting to overturn the presidential election. You guys, his speech was very sad. He talked about things like athletes needing to stand for the flag and like how black people used to be patriots, but we lost that. And then when he was done talking, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries destroyed him worse than a Mortal Kombat fatality. Yes, indeed. It was beautiful. It was almost like going to church. Say that. And the best thing is, his whole sermon was caught on video. And that video made the church say amen. Amen. It made the church say hallelujah. Hallelujah. This man, Hakeem Jeffries, said this. I was hoping to engage with the new distinguished gentleman from Utah as he sat here lecturing us about patriotism. Amen! And I was just going to ask him how he voted after a violent mob attacked the Capitol to hunt down members of Congress. Amen! To hang Mike Pence. Ooh. To assassinate Nancy Pelosi. And you want to sit here and lecture us about patriotism? Lecturing us on your first day. Do you, do you really, really want to do, do that? that? It's not about words, it's about actions. You know what? Explain your actions on January 7th when you supported an insurrection. And I was ready to have a dialogue. Were you yield? No. No, 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 he won't yield. It's my time and you don't really want any of this either. Yes, he shall not be moved. You're reclaiming my time. Damn it! The Capitol was desecrated. Desecrated! The Confederate flag was bandied about. 
discriminated. That didn't even happen in this capital during the Civil War. Obliterated. That's an insurrection. It's an infection. That's sedition. It's their tradition. That's undemocratic. I find it dramatic. That's problematic. Oh, oh he rhymed one too? And the American yeah. thing to do is to stand up to it. Amen. I yield back. I yield it back to you. I yield it back. I yield it back. I yield it back to you. We yield it. I have my own YouTube channel now. Yay! Be sure to subscribe for a lot of show clips and a lot of digital exclusives and a lot of this. Look, 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 look.